Eric Spina is the 19th president of the University of Dayton and the only lay leader in school history. He has quickly become known as a leader with high aspirations for the university, a sense of imagination and a deep faith in our future as one of this nation's leading Catholic research universities. An engaged, energetic leader, Dr. Spina has made investments in initiatives targeting towards increasing diversity and accessibility, key strategic focal areas of his presidency. The fall 2018 class was the most diverse and academically talented class in school history. An aerospace engineer by training, Eric brings 27 years of distinguished leadership and service at Syracuse University, most recently as vice chancellor and provost. During the first year of his presidency, Eric engaged faculty, staff, students, community partners, and alumni and friends from around the world in a visioning process which culminated in his inaugural address. He is now committed to advancing that vision into action while strengthening the university's reputation as the university for the common good. Dr. Spina will introduce Will Haygood, the 2019 nonfiction runner-up for Tigerland, 1968 to 1969, a city divided, a nation torn apart, and a magical season of healing. Dr. Spina. Good evening. Hey, you know, that's pretty good for a Syracuse grad. <laughs> it's, uh, it's a real honor to be here to, uh, to introduce our friend, uh, Will Haygood. Uh, the, the best writers are our witnesses to history. They have a keen eye, an insatiable curiosity, a dedication to truth, and they know how to tell a great story particularly the untold ones that shape our view of the world. They make us think. They make us marvel at a well-turned phrase or an apt analogy. They make us realize our shared humanity. They're cultural historians who help us put our times in perspective. This describes Will Haygood perfectly. He's a best-selling author, a Pulitzer Prize finalist, an acclaimed biographer, a scholar in residence in higher education, and he is a storyteller for our times. His prolific body of work includes eight nonfiction books, including a memoir and biographies of such 20th century luminaries as Thurgood Marshall, Sammy Davis Jr., and Sugar Ray Robinson. But I hardly need to introduce Will to this audience, as we've been inspired by his words on the page and on this stage. He has served as MC of the Dayton Literary Peace Prize Awards dinner twice, and in 2016 he was named a finalist for his brilliant biography, Showdown, Thurgood Marshall and the Supreme Court nomination that changed America. In that same year, he participated in an evening for justice and peace at the Victoria Theater and hosted a conversation with winning authors at Sinclair Community College. Thanks to Sharon, the creative engine behind the Dayton Literary, Liter Literary Peace Prize. Will came to the University of Dayton that same year to keynote the Reverend Martin Luther King Jr. prayer breakfast. To a full Kennedy Union ballroom, wrapped with attention, he told the memorable story of Eugene Allen, a White House butler who served under eight presidents, never missing a day of work. Will's front page Washington Post story, which became the basis of the award-winning movie, The Butler, and later his own book, did not serendipitously land in Will's lap. He found that story through hard work and inspiration as he looked to tell what people surely view as a larger story, one that traces the civil rights story and the struggle in this country. As Will covered Barack Obama's presidential campaign, he wondered how best to mark the historic moment if the country voted in the first African-American president. Could he track down an African-American employee who had worked in the White House during the darkest days of segregation and racial inequality to show how far the country had come? When he discovered Gene Allen, he found the face for that story. His is the story, Will wrote, from the back pages of history, a figure in the tiniest of print, the man in the kitchen. Fast forward to tonight, as Will is being recognized for his latest book, 
Tigerland, 1968 to 1969, a city divided, a nation torn apart, and a magical season of healing. It's a powerful, poignant, and provocative book that tells the uplifting story of teams from a poor, segregated high school that won two state championships in the same year. Just as Will did in his book, The Butler, A Witness to History, he sought to tell the backstory, what he calls the forgotten story. During a racially charged time of turmoil in our country, in a year when both Martin Luther King Jr. and Robert Kennedy were assassinated, Will transports us into an all-black high school in Columbus, Ohio, into the lives of players and coaches who brought blacks and whites together across the state during their miraculous, inspiring runs to victory. The black athlete, then as now, has never been far from the social and political swirl of America, Will observes. Literature is the whistle that won't stop blowing at game's end. For Will, the intertwined threads of sport, race, and social justice are emblematic of what he calls the nation's ongoing battle with race. At the University of Dayton, we're honored that Will will serve a three-day residency this week, teaching classes, lecturing, and engaging with students, faculty, and staff in the inaugural Roger Brown Residency in Social Justice, Writing, and Sport. He'll give... He'll give a free public lecture on Wednesday night, 7.30, Kenny Union Ballroom, and all of you are invited. It's fitting that Will is the first writer to serve in this residency, which honors the late Roger Brown, one of the greatest players to ever put on a Dayton Flyers uniform, but whose life story was tainted by unproven gambling allegations that cost him his collegiate career and a shot at the NBA. This is another forgotten story in history that is being brought to light with the hope that we can all grow in our commitment to equality, fairness, social justice, and peace. Like Will, we all need to be faithful witnesses to history. I'm pleased to introduce my friend and colleague, Will Haygood, who's such a worthy recipient. And I thank you, Dr. Spina, for saying what you said and for studying my, my work and my books. Um, and I thank the larger Dayton community for your kindnesses through the years. Um, yes, I have been the MC in before and I was a finalist before, and tonight I'm runner-up. Uh, but there was no quid pro quo. <laughs> Sharon called me, and she told me of this honor and if there was anybody listening, it was my next door neighbor because my walls are very thin. <laughs> uh, it's been a joy to be here with Eli, with Richard Powers, with Ian Scott Momaday, and with Golans. Um, it is an honor uh, to be in the uh, room with you. Um, I wrote this book, Tigerland, uh, and because it was a story lurking in the shadows, uh, and I'm not a sports writer, somebody just asked me that, but I found 27 athletes, sons of African American mothers who fled from the borders of their own country. They all came from the South. 
up north in the 50s because they were haunted by the ghost of Emmett Till. They had sons and they didn't want their sons uh, to suffer a fate like Emmett Till suffered. They had a black high school principal at East High School. Several months after Martin Luther King Jr.'s assassination, the school doors opened and Jack Gibbs told the student body that we want to do something to make the city proud of us. We're the only black school, all black school, so eyes are going to be upon us wondering if we're going to walk out and express anger. He didn't say anything about sports. But these players won the state basketball championship. One of the games was against Toledo Libby High School. They won by one point. I went to the city of Toledo on my book tour. And many members of that team that East High beat were there. And the first thing I said was, and I thank you for losing that game. <laughs> and otherwise, this book might not have been written. <laughs> and then with the baseball team, they suffered a five-game losing streak. And they went on to get into the state tournament, and they got on a roll. And 50 days after winning the state basketball championship, they won the state baseball championship, and they made history. It was something that had never been done before in the state of Ohio. But circling around this book is the ghost of Martin Luther King because the spiritual advisor for that team was Reverend Fail Hale, who had grown up with Martin Luther King Jr. in Georgia. There never was a monument or there never was a street sign to what they did that magical season. They had two coaches, white men, who had big hearts. And then the basketball coach landed at Normandy in World War II and came back and wanted to teach at this all-black high school. Two white coaches with big hearts. 27 black athletes who made history. There is a line from the play Hamilton. We want to be in the room. That's all the black athlete has ever wanted in this country, to be in the room. And they shouldn't have to be silenced by that. When I interviewed all of these players and tracked them down to a person, they said to me how proud their mothers, who were maids, would be that this story is finally being written. There never was a monument. And when I went home to Columbus, Mayor Ginther and all the players were there for this special soiree pulled a tarp on stage over a street sign. And now the street on the side of East High School is known as Tiger Land Way. So, from Tiger Land Way, to the Dayton International Peace Prize, the East High Tigers, young men who rose up in a time of fire, are in the room. And God bless you for that.
It's one of the great storytellers I've ever met. Thank you, Will. Congratulations.